All right, everyone, welcome. Today we have a guest that hardly needs introduction in this community, Dr. Terry Walsh. If you haven't heard, she's a trailblazing medical doctor who not only healed herself from secondary progressive multiple sclerosis, but has dedicated her work to researching and developing protocols that help those of us with autoimmune disease live better and healthier lives. Angie and I were both incredibly inspired by Terry's journey, journey while we were healing ourselves, and we know that her work has been an instrumental force of healing for many in the community. Terry, I know that that I would not have started changing my diet when I did had I not seen your TED talk four years ago. So personal thank you for me. Um, today we've got some questions about functional medicine, treating autoimmune disease, and the healing process that we would love to address for our viewers. So welcome Terry and thank you so much for being with us. And thank you for having me. It's always uh, a great pleasure. Awesome. Thanks so much, Terry. So uh, we just have a few questions for you. The first question we have was, um, as a doctor yourself, what do you see as the main impediments to better merging functional and conventional medicine in our healthcare system? Basically, we want to know what's taking so long, Terry. You know, actually, I think it's happening at breathtaking speed. Uh, we are, uh, the, the speed of change uh, is accelerating. Uh, when I went to medical school, uh, there I, I learned that all stomach ulcers were caused by stress and too much acid. And then uh, in the early uh, 90s, late 80s, there was this uh, doc who said, no, no, stomach ulcers are uh, related to a bacteria. And uh, he couldn't get his papers published. He was called an idiot and worse. Uh, and uh, 25 years later, uh, Barry Marshall gets the Nobel Prize in medicine. Uh, and so that's uh, breathtaking speed. Uh, in, in my own personal journey, when I uh, recovered uh, and d dramatically improved my health, I changed how I practiced medicine, focusing on uh, talking to my patients about diet, uh, physical activity, and, uh, and really quit relying on prescription medication uh, largely. My partners thought that was really an odd thing, uh, and so I was seen as an oddity. Um, however, in these eight years uh, at the VA, uh, I now run a therapeutic lifestyle clinic, uh, and the university now hails the research that I do as some of the, the most innovative work being done at the university. So I've gone from oddity uh, to visionary in just eight years. Uh, and when I talk to my um, uh, uh, patients, uh, many more of them have heard about functional medicine. There's a lot more interest. And I'm hearing uh, from my followers on Facebook that many more physicians are giving their patients uh, a copy of my book uh, when they make the diagnosis. So actually, uh, change is happening at uh, very fast speeds, and that's because of social media uh, and uh, the efforts uh, of people like uh, yourselves in uh, promoting this message. So thank you for your good work. Yeah, viva la revolution, Terry. <laughs> Absolutely. Awesome. Um, so in this, in this new reality that you're really helping us construct, Terry, with functional medicine and social media and being informed patients and having a better access to doctors that are really um, providing us with a great effective treatment, um, what do you think this future looks like? Um, what do you think um, is going to shift with like the research that you're doing and how we're approaching the treatment of autoimmune disease? I think we'll get more and more interested about uh, the root cause of our health problems. Uh, and for a long time, we've known that it's a very complicated interaction between the genes that you have uh, and your environment. We're beginning to recognize that the bacteria in our bowels are also uh, very, very uh, important. Uh, it, and I think we'll have increased uh, recognition by the public that uh, diet and lifestyle matters uh, are more and more and more uh, important. I think employers will be more and more interested uh, in diet and lifestyle programs. Um, and, you know, I don't know what will happen. Uh, it may well be that 
uh, medicine will be radically transformed and there may be another profession that emerges that has an even more powerful role. Uh, whatever profession that uh, clearly articulates to the public that creating health is the most effective treatment for nearly all of our chronic disease states will be the profession uh, that has the dominant role to play. Wow, just got chills. <laughs> Yeah, wow, that's an incredible uh, viewpoint um, and, and big shift in, in how well, things might happen. I think a big shift uh, could happen. I think social media could be part of this. Uh, I think it, it will depend on what uh, messages resonate best with the public, who is best able to articulate this. Uh, but it's the creation of health uh, that will be the uh, utter transformation. Uh, and it, it will, will, not, will need to do that to save our economy because our economy will crash if we keep thinking that uh, treating disease uh, mm -hmm. is um, how we achieve a healthy population. Right. right. So, Terry, most of our viewers are familiar with the incredible amount of disability you were able to recover from, um, and if not, they should go check out your TED Talk. Um, I know that it's hard for folks to see a success story and also see how difficult or slow that journey was in the midst of everything. Sure. Do you have any words of encouragement for those who have been working on improving their health despite autoimmune diseases for a long time and they're just seeing slow progress? Um, well, a, a couple things I wanted to tell people. So my TED talk makes it look like it was just um, a very rapid uh, turnaround in just 12 months. Uh, but I started making my dietary changes uh, in 2002. Uh, so this actually took uh, a little longer uh, in the whole process. But we all have a unique set of um, factors that contribute to our illness. Uh, there's our DNA, uh, the microbes in our gut, the toxins we've absorbed in our body over a lifetime, our uh, social support, our um, physical activity level, and our self-talk. Um, what I tell my patients is that if you don't address the diet and lifestyle factors, you aren't addressing the root cause of your illness and your illness will progress uh, despite whatever drugs uh, your physicians give you and you'll accumulate more diagnoses and need more and more meds. Uh, by addressing the root cause, by addressing diet and lifestyle, uh, there's a very good chance that you can slow your decline, uh, stop it, and in many cases dramatically restore your health and function. But it's difficult for me to predict for any given individual if all they can do will be to slow their decline, stabilize it, or have a dramatic recovery. Now most, or, or let's say many folks who uh, are not recovering very well, when I ask them what are they eating, what are they doing, uh, many uh, acknowledge that they're you know, following my protocol 70% or 80%. Uh, and of course, 80% um, in a few people will be good enough, but in some people you're really not going to get better until you're 100% of the protocol. Uh, and for some, uh, you have to um, also uh, work on toxin load, uh, stress management, uh, self-talk, social network. And for some, uh, there may be a large enough burden of uh, co-infections, chronic infections, toxins that also have to be dealt with. So it's difficult to know for any uh, individual uh, what the prediction, what will happen. Um, but for a population, very few people don't uh, at least have improvements in mental clarity uh, and improvements in uh, physical energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think that's spot on, Terry. And I know that for me, you know, from one month to the next when I was very ill, I would sit up in bed and I didn't feel like I was going to pass out where the month before I did. And that was the only improvement I saw in a month. And I remember thinking, you know, how, how am I going to get through this? This is going to take a very long time. But, you know, in the last four years that I've been on my healing journey, I am still get having improvements. You know, there are things that I thought that mm -hmm. I was going to live with that are now changing. And um, I know that you've actually demonstrated this um, the two times that I saw you in person at AHS. I remember one year, you know, you said you could lift your arms to here. And then the next year you said, hey, guess what, guys? 
like, <laughs> you know, and yeah. um, that was very powerful because it really showed that um, even though I saw you at those both events and, and the first year you looked great, but the second year you looked even better, <laughs> you know, and so, um, yeah. Yeah, you know, I was at another uh, functional medicine talk, and a uh, faculty person was talking about me, and they pulled slides or photos from my website and showed them sequentially over time. And it's really quite striking that you know, in 2007, I looked really pretty bad, and uh, but every year I keep looking better and younger. Although my hair is getting more gray, um, but I'd say the rest of me is looking younger and younger. I think that the gray is okay. That's you earned yeah. them. But that's okay. People like gray hair um, doctors, so that works. Right. <laughs> okay. Terry, you know, I have one question, um, and I see that our audience is really um, curious about this question too. You know, before we came on air, uh, Mickey and I had the chance to talk to you a little bit about the research you're gearing up to do and mm -hmm. the the research you've been doing. And the audience would love to hear more about your research and have a little update there. Can you share with us? Sure. Uh, so we have a couple of papers that we're working on from our very first study. Uh, one uh, will be GATE, uh, and when I can finally get that, it, we'll be submitting that to a open access journal, and we, my goal is to get that um, so the public will be able to see those uh, stunning videos that we have. Uh, we're also finally analyzing the MRIs that we got at one month and 12 months so we can uh, see what we found. Uh, our preliminary look looked uh, was certainly very exciting with some uh, exciting results there uh, and I'm uh, putting out a call uh, for some uh, uh, funding support so we could analyze our mood and thinking ability data again my preliminary look there was also very exciting uh, uh, I am uh, just now enrolling a uh, fresh group of people into a diet, uh, the Swank diet, which is a low saturated fat diet, the first diet that was uh, ever studied for MS, uh, versus uh, the Walls diet. Uh, and we, we're just starting to get uh, enrolled there. We'll be doing uh, a lot of motor tasks. We will also be doing MRIs at baseline and at 12 months. So that'll be very exciting to show uh, can we have a difference uh, in, le in lesion load. Uh, brain size, structure, uh, and of course that puts us at the same level uh, as drug studies. So very big step. Um, and uh, I mentioned earlier that we've been working on a fresh grant that'll be for about three million dollars uh, and we'll be comparing uh, again uh, the two diets, Swank and Walls, will also have a physical activity component uh, and the end for this one uh, looks uh, we'll be shooting for 200 people. So that'll be a larger study. Very excited about that. Uh, and ever the optimist, you know, I'm, I'm feeling very, very hopeful that uh, one or um, that this grant uh, may be funded. Uh, we have a, another grant uh, for um, 50 subjects uh, that's off with the MS Society. And, you know, I, I'm very hopeful that they'll fund us uh, in part. Uh, one, uh, we have uh, a very, very well uh, written grant. We have stunning uh, preliminary data. And I know their constituents are making it very clear they want the MS Society to fund research related to uh, diet. Wow, that's incredible. Terry, is it exciting um, when you, when you, you know that something great is going to come out of this research and then you get there and you do the analysis and you see like, wow, big change has happened. We have, you know, stunning results. Is that an exciting feeling? You know, it's hard to sleep at night because, you know, so many wonderful things are happening so I have to spend more time meditating at night. Um, because, you know, when we do these analyses um, and we're seeing uh, these results, uh, submitting our papers, uh, getting them in, uh, in print, that's fun. Uh, I tell you, it's even more fun when I'm getting these notifications that other researchers are talking about uh, my research, uh, and and we've had uh, more citations referencing uh, the work that we do. So uh, the MS uh, research world uh, has moved past uh, calling me, uh, you know, a variety of unprofessional names. Now they call me colleague. Awesome. Well, congratulations, Terry, and we're just so excited to see what comes of all of this. And, you know, 
as patients, we're so grateful that you're putting in the time and the effort and, and you know, writing those grants. I know um, for the audience, you know, Terry took a break to talk to us today from writing this grant. So, you know, she is very committed and very dedicated to this work and it is really moving um, the movement forward. So we are so grateful um, for that. Um, you know, I, I wanted to uh, put a, a plug out. I know we've had many people in your audience and in the uh, paleo world that have been uh, contributing to our research funds. And uh, these very early dollars have made it possible for me to collect uh, the preliminary data that we're using now to write for these grants for uh, millions of dollars. It, it is, I um, haven't gotten them yet, uh, but be because I can collect all this pilot data, uh, I'm in such a better place writing my grants now. Awesome. Well, we are we are so ready to help you get the word out about all of the stuff you're doing, and I know that everyone is really willing to support. And it must feel good that that first little bit is over, because you know that's always the hardest when you have an idea, and you know you you trying to convince people to support you and get the funding there. Um, research is very expensive, so um, that's great that you're in the position you're in now um, to keep it going. It's awesome. Um, so I w would like, you know, before we, we had this little conversation about nose to tail eating, um, except with vegetables, and uh, Terry was explaining to us how she makes this uh, butternut squash soup that just kind of blew Angie and I's mind. So we would love it if you could explain um, this, this concept to vegetables because a lot of our readers and our listeners are really focused on how to eat this way on a strict budget, and that's something that's very near and dear to your heart, and I know you have some great tips for us, Terry. So um, my clinical practice is at the Iowa City Veteran Affairs Hospital and many of my patients um, don't have a lot of money and that's why they come to the VA hospital so I'm very attuned to helping people figure out how to do this um, saving money. So the first thing is quit throwing away food that you can eat. 40% uh, of our uh, food uh, is thrown away in America. Uh, and uh, fall is coming so I'm back into making lots of soup so I had a uh, bison uh, soup bone in uh, brewing all day so I go off to work and I put in a big butternut squash. I slice off the stem and put the whole squash in. Uh, and I just have it on the back of my stove on the lowest amount. So it's just, you know, very low simmer all day. I come home and I scoop out that big butternut squash. And, you know, big, like yay big. Uh, and I chop it up. I put it in my Vitamix, the rind, the seeds, and all. And I, but I've chopped it up sort of. Uh, and then I start ladling in uh, bone broth, uh, and I put in a shot of uh, powdered dulse, and then I turn it on low, grind it up, turn it on high, and the seeds make uh, a milk. So now I have this lovely creamy butternut soup, and I taste it like, well, it could be a little bit more creamy. So then I add in a half a can of uh, coconut uh, milk, full fat, uh, and a little sea salt. Uh, and then I'll serve that, and my family uh, loves that. And so that's like a five-minute uh, supper. Uh, it's very, very easy. That's awesome. I, I'm very inspired after all of the butternut squashes, and especially acorn squashes. Oh, my gosh, I can't believe that I've ever even peeled one right now. You're just blowing my mind, Terry. <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and it's... Um, the rind of the vegetables uh, is where the plant meets the environment, so it has to put most of its uh, resources there to protect itself. Therefore, that is the most potent nutrition is usually at the rind. So, and we peel and throw that away. It's also um, uh, what will be the most potent for feeding our microbiome. Um. On that note, um, you know, we also talked a little bit about supplements. I would love to know um, on behalf of our readers, because we get a lot of questions about what supplements do I need to be taking when I transition my diet this way? What role do supplements play? Um, can you give us a little info on that? So, you know, at the VA, the VA doesn't uh, have supplements, period. And we might have some vitamins, uh, as in B vitamins or vitamin C, um, and uh, you'll have fish oil. Uh, and so, what do I use? Vegetables, vegetables, vegetables. 
Um, we measure vitamin D levels, and so we'll address that. We'll measure homocysteine levels, uh, and we'll address that with uh, uh, B12 and folate uh, in the methyl forms. And that's the extent of the supplements that I use in my lifestyle clinic. And I get stunning results. Rarely do we have people not respond. That's so, great. Oh. Yeah. The vast majority, uh, what you really need is uh, vegetables and lifestyle. More vegetables than a vegetarian over here with Terry, you guys. <laughs> She's blowing you know, our minds. <laughs> Um, you know, absolutely. Um, we talk uh, a lot about vegetables. Uh, uh, yes, uh, people do uh, get to eat meat, and yes, they still get to have bacon. Um, but I really stress uh, vegetables. Uh, and, and the big question is, who are we feeding? Are we feeding us, you know, uh, or are we feeding our microbiome? Uh, and obviously, uh, there's a lot of both. Uh, uh, and we're just now beginning to understand that the microbiome uh, may be the most important part of what determines our health, uh, which means uh, that may be the most important part uh, uh, of my diet is what I'm feeding my microbiome, uh, which is really uh, non-starchy vegetables uh, or raw starchy vegetables. Okay. Terry, when it comes to uh, fermented foods, how do you advise your patients? So uh, we talk about uh, making things like beet kvass uh, and kombucha, which are uh, really very inexpensive. Uh, I have um, learned how to make uh, coconut milk yogurt that uh, my whole family likes a whole lot. Uh, and so in my lifestyle classes, we include uh, cooking classes. Uh, and we have a skills class that people come through uh, every month and we rotate through uh, having cooking demonstrations. Uh, we also do uh, meditative experiences uh, and we have uh, Tai Chi, yoga, strength training. Uh, so the, the first cooking demonstration uh, was making uh, fermented uh, cabbage which is very easy and of course uh, very Iowa, very German. Great. And can you walk us through some of the lifestyle component to your plan that you have with people? Sure. Um, well, we talk about the uh, critical role of stress reduction. Uh, certainly in the military, uh, people get trained to uh, go to hyper alert very quickly and there's a big uh, uh, adrenaline rush. Uh, but they don't get trained how to return to that meditative practice. So I uh, explain how critical that stress uh, reduction is uh, and then we go through a, a long list of what the, some of the options are. Hunting, fishing, gardening are probably the three most popular uh, and also free riding about uh, whatever their challenges are. Um, and then uh, the next thing I talk about is movement. Uh, that uh, if we don't move our bodies, we don't make enough uh, nerve growth factor for the brain and you accelerate the loss of your brain cells and you accelerate uh, aging of the brain and bring uh, dementia on at a younger age. Uh, and so I um, also talk that strength training is much more important than aerobic training. So my uh, preference is that people strength train, do their stretching and balance train. If they do all of that and they still have time left over, and they want to do aerobic training, they can do that. But uh, strength, balance, um, and stretching are really uh, far more important. Uh, and of course, we talk a little bit about social networks um, and family support, uh, resilience, uh, the meaning of life, uh, your inner purpose. That's so important, Terry. We love that you touch on that. You know, we've um, had a few people on this webinar this year, um, doctors in different, you know, healthcare sectors, and, and we've tried to touch on that with everybody. And I think that's one thing that uh, Mickey and I really respect about your protocol, that you, you bring that into play and you touch on how important the social network is. What do you tell patients who are really uh, struggling with the social network aspect of their recovery? Well, um, I talk a lot about addiction, that uh, we're all addicted to uh, food, um, 
some of us are also addicted to uh, tobacco, alcohol, and other substances. And uh, people understand if you are addicted to alcohol or heroin, you can't have people using in front of you. Um, but we don't understand that about food. So if you're going to be successful, you make it far easier on yourself if you clean up your environment and get uh, all of the bad choices out of your environment. And then you have to think about your social context uh, and your work context. And this is where you'll know who is uh, deeply your friend and will create a sh social environment where you're not tempted with bad choices, uh, where they see uh, their friends also eating similar foods and enjoying themselves. And uh, some relationships can no longer revolve around food. I also talk about how uh, most addiction models include relapses, uh, where you slip back into addictive behaviors, uh, and then you uh, try again uh, and again and again. And typically, it takes several um, quit attempts to success to uh, successfully stop one's addictive compounds. And I think the same is absolutely true when we talk about sugar, uh, gluten, um, uh, grain-based diets. What do you think, uh, Mickey? Should we uh, help wrap things up for Terry so she can get back to that super important $3 million grant? Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's do that. Um, so thank you so much, Terry, again, um, on behalf of our, ourselves and our healing journey and also this community that you've really given a lot of fire to um, with your research and, and with your work, both helping us and, you know, moving forward. forward every it's incredible um, and thank you for being here for talking to us and and really for connecting with our audience we know people are so grateful um, will you tell us a little bit about where people can find you and as well as this clinical trial you're recruiting for um, sure. about the survey that people can help you with and I notice in the comments here people are asking how they can help um, financially with your research so um, well, why like, don't you give like everyone questions. the beats there yeah, right? <laughs> okay, so uh, you can find me at my website, Terry Walls, T E R R Y Walls.com. If you uh, click to uh, the About the Walls Foundation, uh, there's a button there, Donate Now. Uh, and uh, the money that we raise uh, in October and November will be used to support that cognitive research. So uh, that would be a wonderful thing. Uh, and my cognitive researchers uh, would be absolutely thrilled. Um, you can also follow me on Facebook, Terry Walls MD, and on Twitter, Terry Walls. Um, our clinical trial, we are recruiting people who have relapsing, remitting multiple sclerosis and have fatigue. Uh, they could reach out to my uh, clinical coordinator, and I'll get the email so you guys can have that in your uh, show notes. Uh, it's Catherine with a C hyphen Chenard, C H E N A R D at uiowa.edu. Um, uh, to participate, you have to be willing to be randomized uh, into a low saturated fat diet uh, or the modified paleo diet. Uh, and I know many of your listeners will say, nope, I'm not going to be randomized, but they may know other folks who have uh, relapsing remitting MS who've not yet started a dietary program who might be willing to come in and be randomized. Uh, and, uh, and again, as I said earlier, whatever donations we get in the month of October and November, we'll be using to support the uh, cognitive research. And then, Terry, awesome. can and, you... and uh, the survey. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, yes. Thank you. The, the NARCOM survey. So the North American Committee on Multiple Sclerosis Research, NARCOMS, uh, does a quality of life survey uh, twice a year. And I've been doing uh, them uh, since 2003. This fall's survey is about uh, diet and lifestyle. And so on my Facebook uh, page, I've got a picture of the survey with the Swank diet and the Walls diet as one of their options. So if we have any followers who have multiple sclerosis or clinically isolated syndrome, uh, please sign up for NARCOMS, complete their survey, and report whichever diet it is uh, that you're following or the diets that you've tried in the past. 
This shouldn't take you long, but it will have um, a very powerful impact on research that's being done about the impact of diet and uh, multiple sclerosis. Awesome. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thank you again, Terry. Um, you guys can find Angie and I at, at autoimmune-paleo.com. We will be popping uh, the replay link in our newsletter, which is how most of you guys probably heard about this, as well as a link to Terry's work and, um, and the survey for anyone who's interested. Um, so we'll... Oh, oh, go ahead. You got anything else to say, Terry? Well, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll get you a... a, a photo of, of the screenshot that shows the swank and the walls diet being circled in red. It's so exciting for Perfect. us. Perfect. We, we will pop that on Facebook. And for those of you guys that uh, haven't heard, you guys should pick out, up uh, Terry's book. This is it, The Walls Protocol. It will change your life, even if you don't have multiple sclerosis. Um, you know, this, this is a really incredible information for anyone who's searching um, for more information about diet and lifestyle for autoimmune disease and really eating your vegetables. Let's be real, Terry. You are queen of the vegetables. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> queen of kale. All right. Thanks queen for being with kale. us, everybody. Okay. Thank you. Bye.